Hey everyone, Rogue Gold here, and today we're back with yet another Division 3 focused video. I know I've been doing a lot of these. I hope you guys are still enjoying them. There's honestly not a whole lot to talk about with Div 2 until, you know, TU12 gets closer and we get some, you know, hints and ideas at what the Codename Nightmare event is going to be. So, you know, I've been enjoying doing a lot of these. So let me know if you want me to keep them up in the comments below. I likely will for the next few weeks, at least until TU12 comes around in December. So, today, I want to cover something that, you know, like a lot of my topics, will be pretty controversial. So, I will just put this, you know, out there at the start. This is all just my opinion, my ideas of what could, you know, elevate the potential Division 3. Again, we don't know if it is happening. I think it is. There's plenty of evidence that it is, and so you can go check my playlist on my channel if you want to hear more about that. But... Again, this is just my speculation and what I think would improve the overall health of the game. So I invite you to leave your own thoughts below on this topic and what you think could improve the overall game. So the topic for today is chicken dancing within the division's PvP. Let me be very clear from the start. I do not necessarily share the view that chicken dancing is inherently bad or detrimental for the game or PvP. That is not including the issues that it has had with the server in the past. If you remember, I think specifically in Division 1, there were some issues where, you know, if you very heavily strafed and button mashed your sprint so that you kind of, you know, went back and forth, side to side, whatever, it would lag the server and you would basically become harder to hit and more... I don't even entirely know how it worked, but it basically made it so that, you know, you were hard to hit on the server side from your opponent's point of view, so it was even harder than it normally would be for them to hit you if you were just moving around, right? So obviously that's not good. If they can clear those things up, then I don't inherently think the chicken dancing is detrimental for the game or PvP. Some people despise it, and I, you know, and it's the whole reason why they don't play PvP in Division 1 or, you know, Division 2 doesn't have it as much. I understand that, okay? I get that it's not everyone's favorite thing. Do I think it's great for the game? Or, you know, do I necessarily think it creates the most engaging PvP that the Division could possibly achieve? No. I think the Division's most compelling PvP is at mid-ranges. I, I derive, you know, satisfaction the most from being able to beam someone from, you know, like a well-controlled gun, whether it be an AR, SMG, or whatever, from the mid-range. I feel like that's when I get the most satisfaction out of playing, when I'm able to position myself well and get a good line of sight and take someone down. That's when I feel the best about playing. That being said, however, I do firmly believe that movement and strafing is a part of any fast-paced and competitive PvP game. If you look at, I mean, these are first-person examples, but things like Call of Duty, Destiny, movement is a big part. You can't just stand still hunker down in some piece of cover and just shoot someone. You're going to get killed from the side, from wherever. I think movement is a big part of competitive PvP play. And I think that the devs' attempts to suppress chicken dancing and movement in The Division 2 was ultimately one of the largest factors leading to PvP's demise and its downfall. So ideally in Division 3, I would love more freedom in the movement system, more akin to Division 1, with some of Division 2's polish and animation variety. There's a, I feel like if you go and you play Division 1 now and Division 2, like in the same, you know, 10 minute span, you compare the two, in my opinion at least, there's a lot more smoothness that comes along with Division 2 system. You feel like animations hopping over things, taking cover, rolling, are all, you know, it's, it just flows a bit better. But... It's also a lot more floaty. If you go to Division 1, you can really sprint side to side quickly. You can make tight turns. You can do all these different things that feel, in my opinion, a lot better and like you have a greater control of where you're going. So I think if they could combine those two aspects, keep the smoothness, keep the animations, keep the nice polish, and incorporate some more tightness in the movement and more control for the player, then I think that would ultimately be the best experience. Because ultimately what that type of movement allows you to do is to have combat disengagement, which is something that Division 2 sorely lacks. If you're in the middle of a gunfight right up close to someone, there's no chance, and this is also partly due to burst healing, but we're not going to get into that as much, but there's very little chance you're going to be able to turn around and, you know, run down the block or however far to the next piece of cover to heal up, to get away from the fight, because... You can try to strafe side to side and kind of weave back and forth, but it's so floaty, it's so, you know, bulky in a sense, that you're just going to get hit because you're like the broad side of a barn trying to move down the road. So I think that type, that type of movement with Division 2's animation would be my ideal movement system for the Division 3. To compensate for that, I think measures need to be taken to disincentivize ultra-close quarter combat, the large-scale chicken ants battles. I, you know... In Division 1, I mastered, you know, the chicken dance. I don't even like that phrase, really. But I mastered that type of fight because that's kind of what you had to do. And I, like I said, I don't necessarily think it was bad, but I understand that a lot of people don't like it. And ultimately, I think the PvP could be a lot more competitive and a lot healthier without so much of that, you know, happening just right in the middle of the streets, right? Having six, eight, ten players just fighting all in the span of, like, five meters. So, I think that... 
there needs to be measures to disincentivize that. And how would that come around? Well, I think the main one that I want to talk about in today's video is melee weapons. I think for the Division 3, we should be able to either slot pistols or melee weapons into our third weapon slot, you know, that tertiary slot. I think that it would be, it could bring a lot of benefits to the PvP scene and to that whole idea of chicken dancing in up close combat. So what would melee weapons do? Let's talk about what I think they should do with them if they were to be implemented. It's very important in my mind that you separate DPS players versus tank and skill users. This is a big issue I've talked about before, that tanks are able to acquire too much damage, both in Division 2 and 1. I think it's been a problem that's plagued this franchise since 2016, and it's something that needs to be addressed not only for gear and what you know type of talents tanks are able to acquire, but also if melee weapons were to come into the game, you can't allow tanks to do a lot of damage with melee weapons. It's just not healthy for the game. You can already envision what would happen if tanks could deal a lot of melee damage. They would just put on as much survivability as they could, get up in your face, and take you down. And it would be really cheesy and not a lot of fun. So, for DPS users, for those glass cannon and high damage hybrid builds, I think that their melee weapons would be able to deal a lot of damage. I'm thinking somewhere in the ballpark of two to three hits to take someone down. That might seem quick, but we'll talk about some of the other things that would fail safe that later on. So, I think for damage users, and again, those, you know, high damage builds, that's what it should do. For other users, for tanks and skill builds, if they wanted to have a melee weapon, which might not be the most effective, depending on your playstyle, like I said, you could either do pistols or melee weapons. I think that melee weapons in the hands of those types of builds should have other effects. Maybe it slows someone down when you hit them. Maybe it applies a bleed or a certain status effect, or it marks them so that your team can then deal more damage to the user that you hit them with. It shouldn't deal damage because those types of builds aren't meant to deal damage in the first place, but it should give you some sort of effect that would then allow you or your team to inherently do something that is more worthwhile to what your build is building towards, if that all makes sense. So kind of going off of that, what would melee weapons achieve? I think if someone is abusing movement up close to avoid getting shot, then you pull out your melee weapon, and if you're a damage build, you can kill them easily. You know, if you have a lot of damage, you can just whack them a few times and they'd be dead. Or... If you're a tank or someone else, you could, like I said, you could slow them, weaken them, etc. for your team to take them down. And I think that this melee system could just work off of the same kind of auto-lock melee that we have now. You wouldn't have to aim it, you wouldn't have to do something like that. If you're right up close to someone, within a few feet of them, and you click the melee button, it would just kind of lunge you forward and you know, slice them with an axe or a knife or whatever melee you have. That all being said, let's talk about some safeguards that would need to be put in place in order to prevent melee weapons from becoming meta. We don't want a melee meta. We already kind of saw that at one point in Division 2 when they added the uh, increased Lady Death melee damage. People did that with the claws out. That was kind of cheesy. There were people that could like three or four tap dudes because they're running around with a shield and still being able to smack people like that. So that's not very fun. There are two things that I think they would need to do if they were to introduce melee weapons to prevent them from becoming overly powered. The first is disable sprinting while your melee weapon is out. If you have an axe, if you have a knife, if you have whatever, I don't think you should be able to sprint with it because we don't want people pulling that out and chasing you down a street and you know that as soon as you turn around, you're going to get chopped to death right away without you being able to react, right? That wouldn't be fun. So... It should just be saved for if someone is in your face and you need to hit them, then that's what it would be used for. You shouldn't be able to chase someone down with a melee weapon. So that's the first thing is disable sprinting. And the second safeguard I think they would need to add in is to have a slow drawing animation, not holstering. So uh, if you already have a melee weapon out, for example, and you want to switch back to your gun, I don't think there would be any reason to make that take a long amount of time. However, I do think they should slow down the process of you going from your primary weapon, you know, from a gun to a melee weapon. And we'll come back to why I think this in a minute. So let me give you an example of what I think an ideal Division 3 PvP scenario might look like. I would, uh, the, the, the big things that I think would need to be there are a quick time to kill, uh, the return of some fashion of burst healing, but we'll, we'll come back to that in a sec. And then obviously melee weapons, like I was saying. So before Division 3, you know, in Division 1, somewhat Division 2, the the kind of general thing that would happen is that there are two people, let's say you're facing off down an alley. Someone's going to push, one of the people is going to finally push, and they're going to burst heal the oncoming damage, you know, before they reach you to mitigate whatever you're shooting them with, right? And most of the time, at least in Division 1, with the different talents and with the different uh, damage resistances, you were able to outheal the amount of damage someone shot at you, and then you could close the gap, and then, you know, there, there went the chicken dancing right there. So, now, in Division 3, in this, you know, imaginary Division 3, if someone pushes, I feel like... First of all, I feel like burst healing should have some sort of drawbacks, whether it be a bit of a slower animation. I'm not saying have it take a super long time. I'm just saying if you click your burst heal, let's say it's the first heal, the first aid self heal from Division 1, maybe there should be some sort of little 
even kind of like the med kit in Division 1, right? You like stuck your arm with a little syringe. Maybe something that's just slightly longer than that, I think would be overall healthier for the overall game. So let's say that's there. You try and push someone. There's a quick time to kill already. So someone's going to shoot you down, try and take you down. Let's say you burst heal. You know, now you're in an animation. You can't shoot back. You can't really strafe around too much. And maybe they kill you. But if they don't, and if you're still able to close that gap, then what this person now has the final option to do is back around the corner and pull out their melee weapon. Again, it would have a, a slightly slow animation. And then as soon as your enemy comes around, you can start hitting them and maybe take them down. All right. But before you get too mad at me, because I know that creates a lot of issues, what I think they should also do if they were to introduce melee weapons, and this would also prevent some, you know, ganking scenarios and all of that, is to make some sort of parrying system. So I would feel like if you get hit by a melee weapon, whether it be an axe, a knife, whatever, there would be some sort of screen effect or punishment for the victim of the melee, whether it be you get put on bleed, you get a little, you know, screen shake, a little slash, whatever. You get what I'm saying. But I feel like what they would really need to do is make it so that if two people are holding melee weapons, they already have a melee in their hand, and one goes to strike the other, they can't damage them. It would be some sort of little animation where you hit someone, you, you know, clash your axes, your knives, whatever, and it doesn't do anything. Because this prevents the scenario where someone just comes up, you know, maybe abuses the movement already to try and get in your face, and then they pull out their melee and kill you. You don't really want that, because if you see someone coming at you, and I know I already said you would disable the sprinting, but there would still be instances where people would be able to close the gap and just try and melee you down, because that's the easiest kill. Well, if they try and do that, then you can also pull out a melee, and then they won't be able to hit you. It'll just clang right off, and you wouldn't be affected. So then that creates the scenario where both the attacker and the defender kind of panic. You're like, wow, okay, what do I do? Do I try to pull out my gun? and shoot this person before they can react the same way? Or should I wait for them to pull out their gun and then try and strike them with the melee while they do that? And what this does is it incentivizes people to retreat and engage in mid-range encounters. The whole goal with this, you know, idea of me proposing melee weapons isn't to make them a new type of weapon to use. It's not to make them overpowered. It's the whole goal is to disincentivize ultra close quarter combat and incentivize mid-range combat. I see melee weapons as being a way for you to counteract people getting in your face and trying to chicken dance around you you know, while still embodying those fun elements of Division 1 PvP that made everyone like it so much, because that's what the devs removed with Division 2, that's what made people not like the Division 2 so much, and so if they were to just bring all that stuff back from Division 1, then we would still have some of those same issues, those large-scale chicken dance battles. If they were to introduce melee weapons in some sort of fashion like what I've, you know, outlined here, then that would really disincentivize that from happening, because you'd be putting yourself at a lot of risk for trying to get up in someone's face and shoot them, because as soon as they pull out their melee weapon and they can auto-lock onto you, you're going to be dead really quickly. And again, hopefully, and you know, perhaps I'm overlooking something here, and if you want to let me know in the comments that I am, then go for it, but I feel like having some sort of parry system as well to, you know, allow for whether you're getting ganked, maybe you're so you hear someone flag behind you and they know you're going to come in and try and stab you. You can also pull out your melee weapon and then, you know, just block all their attacks. And then they have to, you know, think for themselves, okay, do I try to pursue this really up close thing or do I back off, take some of the risk off and try and engage them that way? That's the whole ultimate goal here, and I hope that's what it would achieve if it were to be added. And to circle back, the entire point of me introducing the idea that there would be a slower drawing animation for your melee weapon is to hopefully ward off the occurrences where you're trying to melee someone in defense, they push up on you with their gun, they're trying to chicken dance around you, whatever, and then if there was no hindrance to animation speed, they could just pull out their melee weapon as soon as you try and hit them and counteract your hit. And then it would be kind of the whole point would be defeated, right? So the idea is that if you're able to get close enough to someone, they're pushing you and you're trying to hit them, they wouldn't be able to then automatically counter your melee by another melee weapon, if that all makes sense. That way, the ideal time to pull out your melee weapon would be when you're in the safety of cover or, you know, when no one's around or when someone's just about to push you, you back around the corner, pull it out, and then you can hit them. And... If you see someone trying to rush up to you and pull theirs out, then you have an opportunity to gun them down because it's a longer animation, right? So hopefully all of those safeguards and those fail-safes would all kind of culminate to create a really good defensive tool in melee weapons without allowing them to become any form of overpowered or, you know, used more than guns or anything like that. Beyond just gameplay implications, what this would also open the door for is them adding an execution system. If someone is down on the ground, you could maybe pull out your melee weapon and hit melee on them, and it would start some sort of, you know, really cool animation, you know, similar to something like For Honor or, you know, Mortal Kombat's not really the same, but, you know, could be really cool. It could not only, maybe when you do an execution on someone, because you're putting yourself at the risk of being in an animation, out in the open, you could get some sort of, you know, temporary and minor buff, 
maybe you know you get the execution buff that gets you five percent damage five percent damage resistance and maybe five percent increased healing something like that could be really cool and uh on top of that it could then also be a very you know agreeable and easy monetization source for the game put a section in the in-game store that's for executions you could buy you know some really like unique and different ones and then you know cost i don't know five bucks each really easy way for them to make some money and i don't think anyone in the community would really be upset about that because again it's just executions and if you already have a base amount of them then there's really no reason to complain about getting new ones okay guys and that about wraps up all i have for this video here's what i want to post to you am i crazy would this work i mean i think i feel like i went through in my head a good amount of scenarios of what the implications of the introduction of a melee system would do and as far as i can think what i've you know you know said in this video would pretty much cover all the bases needed for, you know, making sure it doesn't get out of line. But if you think that I've overlooked something, and if you think it would become problematic for whatever reason, or it wouldn't work in dissuading chicken dancing, then let me know down in the comments below. I'm super curious what you guys think about this one. But thanks so much for watching, everyone. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and be sure to subscribe with the notifications on to be updated every time I upload. Also, let me know in the comments if there are any specific Division 3 topics you want me to talk about. Um, like I said, I'll probably keep doing a few of these at least until December rolls around and we get to U12 and some stuff about uh, Codename Nightmare. So if there are any topics, you know, regarding Division 3, regarding the future that you want to hear about, let me know and I might, uh, I might do them if I'm interested in them too. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great day. And until the next one, guys, Rogue Gold, out.